So this is what we're doing today. Uh, we have Spider-Woman issue number one of a new series. Now, I am a fan of Jessica Drew. I like this character. I was a fan of this character. I became a fan of the character during her stint in the New Avengers. I uh, know written by Brian Michael Bendis and illustrated by uh, Brian, no, David Finch, you know, decades ago. I can't remember exactly when the book came out, but it's like it was decades, like a decade, over a decade ago. But anyway, and of course, you know, I, I, I enjoyed the character from that. And then, you know, she had her own solo series come out. And I enjoyed the solo series for the most part. Uh, but that thing got canceled, you know. But, you know, a new series is out. I was excited to hear about it. And, you know, I picked it up. Now, um, something that the whole, I enjoyed the story for the most part so far. But there was something that kind of irritated me. Uh, in the book, you know, slightly, but enough for me to talk about because, you know, just felt like talking about it. But first and foremost, overall, let's say we got Spider-Woman, writer, Carla Pacheco, artist, uh, Perry Perez, uh, Frank Diamata, colorist, and, you know, cover artist, and, you know, other people right there. But, uh, let's jump right into this. So basically the story is Jessica Drew is only out with a bunch of rich kids because it's that rich kid's birthday party and she is hired to protect that rich kid by her rich kid's dad here. And, you know, coincidentally, rich kid is dressed up like Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, who happens to be Jessica Drew's best friend. Um... You know, some days it's Jessica Drew, some days it's Jessica Jones. I think, you know, my Kara has two best friends, and they both happen to be named Jessica. But what I like is, you know, a little bit of dialogue right here. My stomach feels like I hit a rabbit badger. I can't concentrate. I, uh, I've got a headache that makes me want to throw and throw, to throat punch anyone who talks to me. And, of course, it shows right there where she's having the headaches and stuff. And it plays throughout the, the, the issue because they're setting something up for the end, which then, of course, sets something up for the overall story. Um, but, you know, it's typical. You know, she's protecting. Bad guys show up. She beats up the bad guys. And, you know, that sort of deal. What this, what irritates me is, and this is sort of a setup for it, because, you know, you have to establish character. Douchebag Deadpool here says, I knew I shouldn't have come to this stupid cripple's birthday party. My parents are going to sue all of you. Wait, for the most, we'll stop right there. I enjoyed this issue. Uh, I thought it was a decent start to a story with the, uh, the minor complaint aside. Hopefully it doesn't go down that rabbit hole. You'll see the major complaint when I get to it, but for the most part, yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed the story. Let's get to it. Let's move on. But it's like, it's like setting up douchebag Deadpool, and of course, you know, she throws the kid into the water. <laughs> That's funny. But moving on, the thing that irritated me was right here. This was the minor part. Frenchman and helicopters. I mean, I think they're Frenchmen. Why did it have to be probably Frenchmen and helicopters? Okay, I get the whole Josh Whedon, uh, as somebody would say, silly Billy banter thing. I understand it. I enjoy it to a certain degree. I like Buffy. I like Josh Whedon's silly Billy banter to a certain degree. But it has to make a certain amount of sense. That makes no sense. What is the correlation between her and Frenchmen? If that was some sort of running gag with Spider-Woman, it would make sense. Maybe it's a um, an inside joke with the writer. I don't know. If you're going to do witty banter, even if it's cringy witty banter, it has to make sense. Okay. Mansplaining part A, done. Then we go over to this part right here. And no douchebag Deadpool's in the water. He's like, we're gonna die. No, no we're not. No, you're not. Uh, what, what would like? What, what would you, you know? Sniffle, you a g girl sob. Girl, what year do you think this is? I think that's a question that Carla Pacheco needs to ask herself. What year do you think this is? And also, for the most part, 
where do you think this is? This is in the Marvel Universe. Now, that's very relevant. Two things. One, really quickly, without dragging this out and repeating myself. You do not need to virtual signal in order to get the point across that somebody could be strong, that a woman could be strong. This has been proven for decades with plenty of characters. You know, there are a lot of female characters within the Marvel Cinematic Universe who have proven that they're strong female characters without having to do the whole, hey, we must prove, hey, without having to do the whole, you know, women should know their place type mentality or girls can't do things that boys can do mentality. And they've been getting by without having to do that for a long time. All you got to do is you got to show it. You show them doing incredible things. You show them doing heroic things, fighting the bad guys and saving the people. You don't have to do the whole bullshit of, Hey, we got to point out that you're a girl and we got to belittle you because misogyny. Because overcoming misogyny proves that you're a hero. No, you don't need to do that. Especially since you are, again, in the Marvel Universe where there are plenty of strong women. Capable women, whether they're normal women, superpowered women, non-superpowered women, uh, side characters, main characters... Uh, wives, girlfriends, assistants, whatever the case may be. This individual, douchebag Deadpool, lives in a universe, lives in a world, in a universe, where they constantly see women doing amazing things. That's why that really doesn't fit in the context of the universe that they are in. Because you witness women doing all these amazing things, saving the world, being a hero. That is as out of place as anything in this universe. That is virtual signaling and that does not help. What helps? Again, showing the hero doing things, showing the hero accomplishing things, facing problems and stuff. The way it's been done for decades with these characters. And, you know, that's pretty much uh, I'm getting all, all I have to say about that. But I just want to point this out, too. I found this kind of funny. Because she takes douchebag Deadpool and throws it at that bad guy. Which I found kind of funny because that's... It reminds me of when, you know, her best friend that she's dressed up as, Carol Danvers, you know, when she first got her cat, Chewie, she threw her cat at a bad guy that she was fighting. And, and we're like, yeah, she was fighting a bad guy, and she was knocked out of an abandoned building. The cat happened to be there. She picked the cat up, and she threw the cat at the bad guy for a distraction. And that sort of reminded me of that right there. But anyway, overall, with the exception of the cringy, silly Billy banter, which I can get over with because I didn't really see a lot of that throughout this book. Maybe it's just at one spot. And the unnecessary virtue signaling, I really enjoyed the book. I recommend the book. Hopefully, they don't go down that rabbit hole of having to do the whole virtue signaling in order to show that she's a strong character because the character's been around for, what, 50 years? 50, 60 years, whatever the case may be, she's, she's already established as a staple in the Marvel Universe. She's already a well-known character, established character. You don't need to pull these this, this bullshit to get people to like her. You just write good stories. And, you know, give her good character development and the rest takes care of itself. Anyway, Captain, I mean not Captain Marvel, uh, Spider-Woman, number one, go get your copy now. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button, that subscribe button, that notification bell, and all the other stuff that you're supposed to do. Catch you on the flip side.